this lesson is looking at points of inflection, but just as a reminder for convex and concave from the previous lesson, so we know it's convex if the second differential is greater than or equal to zero. We know it's concave if the second differential is less than or equal to zero. And we've got this idea that the e to the x looks like it's convex, so that gives you a going up, whereas on the concave, it looks like the entrance to a cave there. And that should help us for this lesson a little bit. Right, here we go. Let me go through to the right page. So this is page... It's page 7 in my completed pack, so hopefully it's page 7 in yours. Right, so we've got a picture, possibly quite a complicated picture, and to be fair, uh, first time I kind of taught this, I was really struggling with the picture and all the information on it. So let's have a look at point A. So would we agree that the gradient is increasing? So point A, my gradient is increasing. So that's the function bit done, saying it's increasing. There, it's an increasing function. Now my gradient, now this is a little bit that messes with the head a little bit. Imagine at point A it's got a value of 5. Now if before it gets to point B, would you say that that gradient is still positive, but maybe it's only got a value of 3? So the value of the gradient is actually decreasing as it travels from A to B. That's what I'm thinking about. And that messed with my head first time I taught it. Now then, if that's the case, I'm going to go concave on the second differential. And there's a reason for that, because I can graph the second differentials. Um, hang on, I've lost my track already. Told you so. Right, so, uh, for B, if I look at B, it's stationary, my gradient is stationary, which makes it a point of inflection. So that's new that about a point of inflection. For C, if you look, my gradient is increasing. Well, it's a positive value, its gradient's going up. But if you look, there, if it had a value of 3, here, it's got a value of 4. So while it's travelling from C to D, my gradient is increasing. That makes it convex there. Now, these kind of ways I, I, I look at this. If I look, it's between B and F. You graph, think of it like a roller coaster. It goes up to the maximum point of steepness, and then it starts coming back down. At that maximum point of steepness, that's where we want to be thinking for our point of inflection if it's not somewhere else, if it's not a stationary point of inflection like at B. So let's have a think about this going to D. So if we're looking at D, it's an increasing value there. My gradient is kind of still getting steeper. At, well, not actually, it isn't. At D, the gradient is the steepest it can be. So it's got the steepest gradient. So it's that bit where if you're in the roller coaster and it's trundling up the hill and you're leaning right back, that's as steep and as far back as you're leaning. And that tells us there that that uh, is stationary there. And that gives us a point of inflection. So if you look at B, B was a point of inflection because the gradient on either side of B is the same way, both positive or both negative, both going the same way. Whereas at D, if you look at D, it kind of changes. Going up, it's positive, but then it's still going up, but the value of the gradient is getting less. And that's why that's a point of inflection there at D. So it's a little bit messy to get your head around. And I'm sure I won't, I definitely won't explain it properly on the video. You'll need to do the video and then get it explained again. It's one of those things that messes with your head. So let's have a look at E. So it's an increasing value. Look at the gradient. The gradient around E is actually getting smaller now. So if I put that down, it's decreasing there. And that's going to be classed now as a concave. Yeah. 
area, concave, or part of the concave at F, there, it's a stationary point, isn't it? There, so stationary, stationary. Um, but if you look what it is, it's the shape for a concave. So it's concave. There. And G is still part of the concave, because all this air, kind of area here, from D to there, that's your concave bit, from just after D. So if you look at G, it's decreasing, and the gradient, if I had a gradient of minus 5, that's got a gradient of minus 2. So my gradient is uh, decreasing as well. And, uh, that messes with, well, it messes with my head, to be honest, uh, thinking about the values. So you need to go through it again. Well, actually, do you know what? You need to look at examples, because uh, all you need to do is find the second differential, really, and see if it's positive or negative. Zero. Right, so let's have a look then. So, uh, so what we got? So we've got x to the full. Now, x to the full looks like x squared, so it's just like x squared, but it's steeper. Or flatter, well. Right. There we go. Right, so, uh, I'm missing bits. So, here we go. Oh, yeah, yeah I missed this here. So points of inflection occur when the second differential is zero. Okay. Right. But there might not necessarily be a point of inflection. It could be a max or a min where the second differential is zero. And this is an example with x to the four. So if I think about y equals x to the four, then dy by dx is four x cubed. Now that's stationary. When dy by dx is equal to zero. Now that would kind of give us four x cubed is equal to zero. X is equal to zero. So I know where my stationary point is. I know my stationary point is at zero. But then if I look at the second differential as well, so d. 2y by dx squared. So that's going to be 12x squared. If I put in x is 0, so if I evaluate this at x is 0, where the stationary point is, it gives me 0 out again. So look, so what I'm saying is for confusion, this is a minimum point. But second differential is equal to zero. So I just need to be careful. So it says here, not, this is a, the reason I'm doing this example, because we might say a point of inflection is definitely where d2y by dx squared is zero. But what I'm saying really is it could just be a max or a min point. So I need to be careful with these. My points of inflection stuff, I always think of being where the gradient's the same flattens out and then same, so all positives. I'd say that as a point of inflection, which is at point B, isn't it? The, the, it's not changed direction, it's gone in the same direction still. It's almost like a, driving up to a set of traffic lights, you slow down, you stop, then you set off again. If you've not got out of your car, we've rolled it backwards. So it's a bit like that. Anyway, that could possibly be the most confusing explanation you've had. But don't worry, when you go through in class again, it makes more sense. Right, so I'll stop this and we'll do the next one.